Okay. Radical. So how do you hear about a Muzi? Now you're a game a tour guide. Now I don't want to say game ranger. Mm. You're a tour guide now. How do yeah. you hear about a Muzi? So after that tour guide, um oh, sorry. Uh, after that tour guide opportunity, um I went and lived with a friend that I met from Love Life in Krugersdorp. So wow. during my time there, um I was living with a friend and yo, that was the deepest in times in Krugersdorp in a fucking shack. Jeez. In a fucking shack. Um, and I was living there. I, li- I think I lived there from December um, until... When did I come to Mose? I think until March 2017. No, 2016. Yeah, because it was uh, 2000... Yeah, I, I forgot about these years. But then I think it was December 2016, I think. And I lived with a guy... Um, no, 2015. December 2015. I lived with a guy in 2016. Right. Then I came to Muzi in... Um, what were you doing out in Kruger's door? Well, the guy I met with him and he was the only guy who could offer, offer me um, a place to stay in Johannesburg. So I was just looking for a place to stay and he had open hands. I'm like, yeah, cool. Come stay with me. We'll hustle together and stuff. Yeah. And... I met some few contacts while I was living there, but uh, I met them here in Cool Constitution Constitution Hill, Constitutional Hill. Which one is it? Constitutional Hill. Uh-huh. Yeah, cool. I met them there, and um, it was like some source of creative, you know, vibe where people like know about creativity in Johannesburg, and then made contact with them, networked with them. Like I told them, yeah, I'm into social media, this type of thing, and then. Uh, uh, two months later, I think in March, I got a call from the person like, hey, I've got a golden card and it's from Omuzi and they think uh, if you are capable of becoming the best social media person, well, come. Do you remember who that was? Um, it's um, Stembile. Stembile. She got a golden card from somebody from Omuzi. Ah. Uh, yeah, so the person gave Stembile because they know to Stembile and Stembile was like, no, no. Mikey deserves this opportunity. I was like, what? You really think I can do this? Like, yeah, go for it. And then, yeah, I took the golden card and I applied. They was like, mm, you need to enter your CV, your pro your portfolio. So, yeah, now it's the mission of going to the internet cafe and sorting out your documents. And <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, applied and, you know, that process. Yeah, but then it was great. Cool. And then, yeah, check out my emails. I think three weeks later, four weeks later, Congratulations, blah, 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 blah. come for interview, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, damn, okay, cool. Maybe this is the start of something, you know, great that is going to change my life, finally. You know, after this great struggle, I'm going to maybe open doors for myself. And, um, yeah, came here for interview, met Keith. Yeah, Keith, yeah. And he was with Sitle, an uh, alumni. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were sitting there. Yo, they roasted me like a motherfucker. Like, uh, ask me those do uh, like questions about myself and I think something that hit um, Keith on on accepting me for boot camp was my story and how I came about to you know to reach so far with a whole lot of challenges that I met on the way. Mm-hmm. So I think it was one of the things that motivated him to give me an opportunity to be part of Omozi. And um, yeah, boot camp called me for boot camp later. Ah, I was like, woo, uh, everything is just going as planned here. Thank God. Cool. Boot camp came. Ah, where's... Oh. Boot camp, I went... Uh, I think it was one of the challenging moments of my life just to realize that I can, you know, use my brains and my ethic thinking to come up with something that can be generally accepted for the people or for mm-hmm. the market, you know? Um, yeah. So he... Uh, Keith was not ready to really take us in. He was like, let me give you another opportunity. Come for boot camp for week two. Because boot camp is for like five days. Ah, week two, we have to prove ourselves now. We're like, I think there was like six of us. Like, um, I think four girls and two boys. Who do you remember from week two? Um, I remember Dimpo. Ah, Dimpo uh, Sol. Ah. Dimpo, I remember... Uh, I forgot her name. What's her name? She uh, she she left for another opportunity while we were recruited. Um, mm-hmm. Zinche. I don't know if it's Zinche. Okay. Yeah, Zanele, Zanele, Zanele. Zanele. Yeah, uh-huh. Zanele. And um, yeah, yeah. Those are the people that are. All right. So you, you're in a movie, and we, we we don't want to talk too much about it. But yeah. I just want to understand uh, two things. I got two questions for you. Oh. 
Actually, three questions for you. What, oh. Firstly, what, what was the biggest learning that you had here at Umuzi? And it might not have even been from Umuzi itself mm. as the organization. Yeah. What's the thing that you're like, Yo, like I learned this lesson at Umuzi? Well, to be professional and turning my whole talent or addiction into a career with the skills that I received from Umuzi was my biggest learning. Like, I don't know if I could have ever get like so much knowledge and skills in mm -hmm. a short period of time anywhere else in south africa or anywhere else wherever i don't know like i think almost it was that light in the darkness that took me out of it you know it gave me this whole opportunity to start a new set of life you know if i if, if i make sense you know it was really tough in the beginning but then when i got into mozi i saw a better chance of having a second life you know and i having a better opportunity to make myself i mean to make myself successful and also to take care of my family on the other side so it was just that opportunity that i really will cherish for the rest of my life you know who who at a mozi inspired you like my manager keith <laughs> Keith was the guy? Yeah, so yeah, Keith. <laughs> so yeah, he always like um I don't know. You know, I think he was like a father figure for me when I was here. Mm. Um because yeah. He used to be so personal when it comes to things, you know, he really takes things from his heart when he mm -hmm. says something because he has been there himself, you know, he has shared his journeys with me, he has shared his struggles with me, you know, he has motivated so far that I believed in myself. When, when I came here on day one, he told me like he was just this young boy looking for an opportunity, nervous, but didn't know what to do. And then here comes Omozi, a building block, stepping ladder, you know, mm. and then now here I am, I have confidence, I'm, you know, I'm doing great things on the other scene and things are just moving greatly you know yeah i think yeah what was one of the hardest things hardest thing the hardest moment at a movie for you can you remember it oh um okay i think there's so many <laughs> 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 it was a long as journey um let me try to think if i have one hardest moment that i've uh, well, I think it was in the middle of um, my sprints here, mm. um, where my family situation was affecting my f my performance. You know, mm, mm. Um, so that was the, I think that was the hardest time. I couldn't even express myself because I just didn't know what to do and who to talk to. Because family support is something which is new to me. Like, I didn't really have family support when I was growing up. Like, it was just my mom. Yeah, that was it. Like, she's the person who cares for me. And the rest are just watching. Like, okay, you are living. Okay, cool. Shop. Mm. You know, so it was one of those things that, yeah, I've, 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 I've yeah. They really get into me emotionally. So, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. All right. So, now, Mikey, fast forward. Mm. Uh, what are you up to right now? Cool. Oh, it's been a year now. Um... After Omozi, I think, yeah, after Omozi, yeah, it's the long period of studying Omozi and ending Omozi has been a year and I think two months now. Um, I'm up to, I'm working for Omozi now, yay. You're working for Omozi, yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I've been noticing um, a lot more traffic on our social media pages <laughs> and I thought that might be you, Mikey. Well, yeah. Actually, I knew it was you because I employed you, but <laughs> I want other people to know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so... I think, yeah, I think it came about when they called me the digital god. That was, like, something that motivated me. Like, when people call you the digital god, like, how do you call me the digital god? Like, like oh, no, the things you do, bro. Like, you make things trend. You make all these things successful in social media. Mm -hmm. Like, oof. like even ask me, how do you do it? Like, ish, bro, I don't know. Maybe it's my hands. Maybe, I don't know. It's just the power within me. I don't know. It's just a superpower, maybe. So, um, yeah, that motivated me to be, like, where I am right now. Like, I'm working for Homozi now. I've worked with a whole lot of clients. Like, I was working with Coca-Cola. Like, yeah, I don't think that's the biggest client mm -hmm. I've ever had. <laughs> so, I was freelancing for Coca-Cola with, um, uh, I forgot these things. Like, the agency, I think you remember, I told you about it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I forgot the name of the agency. Sorry for whoever was working at that agency. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I freelanced with Coca-Cola and um, that was my biggest client. And uh, my other you know, primary client was Tico Events. Mm -hmm. I got Tico Events in the middle of Umozi. Like after Keith just taught me some few tricks about social media and I mm -hmm. took them into practice because he used to love to teach you something. 
make you do it and let's see the results and let's fix where you're going mm-hmm. wrong mm-hmm. so that was like the best practice i could ever get and i practiced with a real client who was happy like happy like uh, i changed his brand into like a very great brand right now like it's very like it generates traffic easily like mm. than before i took it uh, i took the brand from like i don't know 20000 likes um, on facebook to 90000 wow. this year actually we have hit 100000 in june mm. so that was like last year in may and this year so it's like a huge um, performance that i've driven on that um, brand and you're them. working with dj spoon now <laughs> Yeah, another venture into the live updates type of social media management. So I do social media management for DJ's Boo Breakfast at Massive Metro. And uh, that came about when, yeah, someone was being needed from, you know, the DJ's Boo team. And one of the Omuzi alumni, uh, Kira. Kira. Kira yeah, yeah, she like she told me like, hey, Michael, DJ's Boo is looking for this guy. Best person to come for this opportunity. When they, I rocked my shit. It trended for like, uh, yo, I think it trended like for six hours after the show, even. Hmm. Yeah. And um, brought a lot of strategy for them so that they can have a you know, a balanced social media that has direction just mm. than like quoting people when they come to the show. So uh, I'm only working for the breakfast show. I would really love to work for the station to make sure it's it looks like really good, you know. But yeah, um, it's a great opportunity to ex- actually practice what I've learned at Umozi, like live social media updates to actually do it for real with a mass capacity of almost 10,000 people. Mm. Yeah. Mikey, amazing. You know, it's so funny when, when I speak to you because yeah. w- uh, there was a video that was created about you and, and that was the first time I heard about the digital God. Yeah, and I yeah, used to yeah. laugh. I was yeah. like, oh, the digital God, whatever. Yeah. And then we went to that march. Um, it was one of the marches against Zuma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then I really saw Mikey, the digital God. So he had a cycling t-shirt on. And the reason he had a cycling <laughs> t-shirt on was because at the back of cycling t-shirt, t-shirts, they have pouches. Yeah. And in those pouches, Mikey had a whole bunch bunch of like <laughs> battery packs just in case he didn't want to miss one moment that guy trended the whole day the during whole that march yeah and you ma- man you taught me how to deal with social media management and how to take it to the next level yeah i remember at one stage i saw you at the top of, <laughs> of the <laughs> studio bus thing that the eff were presenting yeah. off and uh, you you really did claim your name digital yeah. god there it's, yeah. it's been fascinating watching uh, your growth Mikey uh, throughout this time that yeah. I've seen you and what a what a digital hustler as well man yeah yeah it's been it's been a worthwhile <laughs> I just get overwhelmed when people talk like that so yeah thank you dude you, you're an inspiration to me and, and an inspiration to a lot of young community members here at Amuzi yeah and uh, I just uh, when you look back on your journey now from that time in Park Station mm. and you have difficult times ahead right Mm -hmm. Um, because obviously hustling is hard right it's up and down sometimes you're in the best position other times it it just feels like you're going nowhere right Mm -hmm. what's the one moment that that helps you get through all of this well when i look at like um, the struggles that i've went through i think after losing my father those are like the motivation that led me to the hunger that i have today for success you know like every day when i wake up like i have to be doing something that is going to change my future you know if i'm not doing that why am i alive why am i doing this why am i being a digital marketer why am i being called a digital god if i'm not doing something that's going to change my life so i use that type of motivation to wake up every day and do what i can do so that i can claim that success that is waiting for me all right before we go give us one tip to the community what can they do tomorrow in order to make a difference in their digital presence space Cool. Um, well, that's a dumb one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you see, Mr. Hey, Digital God, we want to learn from you. So I was about to jump on that one. I was like, hey, no, nah, I need to speak the, uh, about the facts now. So um, you're saying that how can I, um, a tip for them to have a great digital presence. Exactly. 
Well, um, I think it's understanding your craft first before we go to the digital space. If you understand what you're offering to people, you'll understand who wants to listen to that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's either you study the people who you're trying to offer products or you're trying to sell your brand to. And then after that, you create something that is based on that person's interest. You know, Then they're likely more to react on it because they have interest on that thing. Uh -huh. That's easy. So I think that's the thing that people are missing out on social media whereby when it comes to trends, if you see something like canyon trending and you're a photographer why don't you jump on it and maybe share your photos best three photos taken by my canyon camera you know mm. and jump on it and you will see people falling in love with you and your work and you know trying to know more about you like oh this guy uses canyon like maybe you can few teach me a few tricks about the the, the camera or how to take best, uh, best shots using that thing mm -hmm. so it's just about jumping on people interest and checking their behavior and studying them and giving them what they want to see all right where do we go to find you on social media, Mikey? Cool. Um, www.facebook.com forward slash Mikey Mashira. Uh, Facebook, uh, that's Mikey Mashira. I have a page there. Um, Twitter, it's Mikey Mashira. Uh, Instagram, at Mikey Mashira. Uh, Tumblr at Mikey Mashila. So we get the <laughs> point. It's all Mikey Mashila. All right, check this guy out, yeah. Mikey Mashila. Yeah, and uh, you'll find him all over social media. Listen, if you uh, if you've just uh, joined us, we've been speaking to Mikey Mashila for the last twenty minutes. It's been so awesome. Uh, he did mention some really rad community members, so I just want to give shout outs to them. Keith, his manager, Sithle, who interviewed him, Dimpo, who was with him in boot camp, Zanella as well, who was in with boot camp. Yeah, and then the person that hooked him up with his latest job at Massive Metro get a deal way so uh, thanks to all those people and you can check them all out we'll put all their details on the, the podcast community as well community is key community is key thank you community Mikey I really key. appreciate it yeah. hey Mikey can you give us your favorite s statement please favorite statement uh -huh. ah, Adam Muzi Adam Muzi come on let's do this okay cool um, <laughs> I can't find anything you're going to be on the hotspot now <laughs> okay so yeah um, yeah I think everything is going to be awesome Everything is going to be awesome. awesome. All yeah. right, Mikey, let's have some beatboxing to get out of here. Okay. So this is the back room. We are interviewing community members from Umuzi. Find out where they are, what they've been up to. Check out next week as we go further and deeper into all the community members. If you got questions, put them on Facebook and we will answer them. Yes. Check it. We're out, baby. Woo. Away, away, away. <laughs>